So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm here with Dr. Umar. We're talking about his book. Uh, before we get into the discussion of today, um, his, his book called Tr "The Metamorphosis of Trinity." Is is that the right title that I mentioned? Yeah, Trin Trinity: The Metamorphosis of Myth is what it is. Metamorphosis of myth. Um, yep. Okay. So. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, may it please Allah to grant us his uh, refuge and inspiration in this time for the benefit of our uh, listeners. Amin. Now, I have in the description the yeah. website of Dr. Umar. Uh, if you've never been there, please go through it, browse through it. There's a lot of information there. You could like literally spend like half an hour just on his website. So definitely click on the link, uh, and and if you haven't, if you've never visited his website, to get an idea of how in depth he's talked about certain things and the and the wide variety of subjects he's talked about. So please uh, definitely uh, look at the website, and uh, also uh, maybe um, you, there's also a page where you can support him. Where I'll, I'll be talking about that maybe in my next interview with Dr. Omer. That those of you that want to support him and his research. Um, and to create awareness about this whole scenario, please do uh, support him also. Um, having said that, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Dr. Umar. So today I wanted to start out about um, the role secret societies have had in creating the modern day society, the modern world. So um, I know that there were a lot of scientists who were part of occults. Uh, you know, Carl Jung himself, we were talking about him the other day, ha was interested in studying occults. Um, Newton was interested in studying occults. Um, was it like this that, you know, they came up with this idea of scientism or science and said, we don't need God, we just need rationality. But behind the scenes, some of these people were actually working for shaitan and working for the occults, working for the shayateen. Do you have a comment about this uh, point that I just made? Um, yes. It's not easy to describe without having a foundation. Okay. Mm. And the foundation is always one of uh, spiritual principles that have to be joined to revelation knowledge and to history. Mm. Okay. If you don't bring all three together, you just get lost. And that's what happened to most of these people whom you just mentioned. They got lost. Okay. And um, that's easy to do when you don't have access to the correct interpretation of what men consider to be scripture. Mm. Okay. When you don't have the correct interpretation of revelation, it's easy to get lost. And that's a principle of satanic governance. The principle is this, keep them ignorant. Okay. So mm. if they become preoccupied with religious knowledge and don't look into the historical background and the actual historicity, then they remain ignorant. Mm. There's a fragmentation that takes place. We mentioned this in our last yeah. uh, interview. Uh, Iblis is the king of fragmentation, and uh, this is what has taken over reduction. This reductionism has taken over modern science, and as a philosophy, it's taken over modern civilization. Everything mm -hmm. is reduced. There's no gestalt, according mm -hmm. to what uh, Goethe uh, uh, preached in his day, and he was also an occultist, okay, mm -hmm. to a greater extent. Uh, although I'm a great admirer of him, and uh, I believe he's made it to heaven, uh, to Jannah. But um, uh, all of these people have studied the occult because the people who are responsible, the alim, who are responsible for explaining things in a relevant manner, are no longer capable of doing it. They haven't done it. Okay. In fact, uh, Dr. Omer, I'd like to share with you, somebody made a comment to me today um, saying, you know, as long as I can do my prayers, I can fast, what do I care about 5G or what do I care about the vaccines or why should I care what's happening in politics? 
that's all dirty anyway. As long mm -hmm. as I can read my Quran and I can mm -hmm. do my prayers and I can do my fasting. Isn't oh. it kind of like a waste of time for me to delve into these things? Shouldn't I rather be reading sayings of the Prophet or reading the Quran? Uh, of course, reading Quran without understanding it. Um, yes, of course. And, and, and what would you respond to somebody who says something like that? Because I am sure a lot of people that are even aware and agree with you and, 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 and can, are beginning to see what, you're, what you already see, uh, they have people around them that are sheep that cannot see. And those people say to us, your students, uh, that, hey, I know I can, you know, I mean, yeah, okay, 5G vaccine, uh, who cares? Uh, as long as I can do my 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 principal duties, my five pillars, mm -hmm. why should I care? That kind of thinking has led the Ummah to its knees. Okay, and I'm not talking about prayerful knees or pious knees. I'm talking about <laughs> humiliation. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> This is exactly where Iblis wants Muslims to be. Mm. Because then he can go about his work of destruction and fragmentation without any hindrance. Mm. You see. Uh, so uh, a person who responds like that, uh, it, it's okay uh, for them to be that way, but it's not okay for your alim to have that attitude. If a person under your right hand is of that framework, of that mindset, let them be. There's no problem with that. Um, but they should never be elevated to a position of leadership. And this is the problem. Mm. See? Because we're also commanded to, 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 there's a hadith or something to this uh, 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 effect that we are commanded to remain conscious of current events. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are. It, it is a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if for someone wants to, if choose, if they want to choose to be irresponsible in that fashion, let them be. Mm -hmm. But don't let your leaders be of that mindset. This is what has caused the downfall of Islam. Too much religion, too much religion, too much piety. And it's a false kind of piety. Yeah, it is, it's, it's the piety where it's all external, right? It's the beer, yeah. it's, the, it's, it's the dress, it's the, the, yes. the, you know, the externalities without the nur, without the light to see. Without the rule, yeah. Without yeah. the rule. Without, without the rule. spirit. Yeah. Without the, the true guidance. You see, mm -hmm. we spoke we spoke about this in our first interview, I think, about this guidance, because you can only be informed by the angels according to what you know. Yeah. You see, so uh, if you don't know something and you can't speak that language, whether it's uh, literature or the humanities or the sciences or whatever it is, if you don't speak that language, you cannot be informed about it. Mm. OK, uh, so uh, one of the things that uh, that I benefit from is is this very fact. You see, I'm informed about many things and that sort of makes me an eclectic scholar, if you will, although I don't like that term. I, I rather think of myself as an informed, pretty well read reporter. <laughs> okay. mm. uh, I'm just reporting what I have learned. OK, mm. that's all I'm doing. Uh, and I feel it's incumbent upon me as a responsibility to inform people. That's why I write. I'm compelled to do it. I mm. don't have any choice. OK, if I don't do it, I am not who I am created to be. Mm. OK, so I live in that uh, reality. For me, that is a reality. And I had a dream to confirm that and all sorts of things uh, um, years ago. So if I don't follow that, if I don't do that, I cannot have peace, you see. Mm -hmm. I cannot live with myself in peace. 
I will be constantly in a state of uh, tension or anxiety, if you will. But if I do my job, if I inform uh, others, then that's fine. So the angels work with me, you see. I may be stuck on a topic, and I'm researching and researching and researching, and I'm looking, and all of a sudden, I get this impulse, look there. Mm -hmm. And so I turn, and I look there, and that's exactly what I'm looking for, exactly what I need, Mm. you see, to to open up a whole new uh, uh, avenue uh, or path to knowledge which is relevant. I'm not talking about irrelevant knowledge. So people like uh, like you just described, they're like the fellow who just uh, who who criticized me for drinking with my left hand. Okay, uh, the the on on our last um, interview. Uh, so these kind of people. They live in ignorance, okay? Um, I, I, you know, I'm not unconscious of that, okay? I'm not unconscious of these things. I lived for 55 years drinking and eating with both hands, and it's habit. And usually when I'm eating or drinking, I'm at my desk and I'm doing something, and I'm using my right hand to write. So I'm... (laughs) For years and years and decades, I would be writing, and I, then I'd pick up the glass with my left hand, and i drink, or my hamburger, or whatever it is, and I go, and it's the same if I'm on the computer with the mouse. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I noticed this, and I know it's the, the sunnah, but some of these things are not as important as others, okay? Um, uh, so... I, I'm re, I'm re, it puts me in mind of the, the the young man who came to the prophet and said, you know, dear prophet, I, I can't be like you. I can't pray like you. I can't do all these things, da, 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 da. And he, he really felt discouraged because mm-hmm. he really couldn't, he didn't have the inner discipline or whatever it was that, that, uh, allowed him to emulate the prophet, you know, in dress, in mannerisms, and all this sort of thing. And um, what did the prophet say? Did he say, depart from me, (laughs) you you cursed beast? No, he said, do the best you can. Hmm. Isn't that what he said? Yes. Of course it is. Do the best you can. Okay, so that's fine. When I read that, I, 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 I was greatly relieved. I said, well, this is my kind of prophet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because I've studied all the prophets uh, that I could get my hands on. And, uh, of course, uh, 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 Muhammad is the, the epitome, you know, mm-hmm. uh, for everything. But no one can be like him. No one. Okay, it's impossible. Okay. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, you know, th- there was a there was another fellow who um, just to complete this thought because um, I want to put this thing to rest. There's two more points I want to make on this uh, now that it comes to mind because um, there was another fellow that um, uh, inquired of the prophet. He said, uh, "I heard you say that God loves so and so, and I don't think this guy's such a great man, you know." And the prophet said, well, go and stay with him for a while. You remember the story. Yeah. So this, this, yeah, this fellow did. He went and he stayed with this other fellow. And he stayed in his house for, you know, I don't know how long. But he came back to the prophet and said, look, he's still, you know, I don't get it. This guy doesn't do, he doesn't pray five times a day. He doesn't do all these things. And uh, da, 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 da. And the prophet said, look, what he does do, he's faithful in. And this is why Allah loves him. Okay? So let your listeners learn a lesson here. And there's one more lesson that's relevant to today about this whole point of Dr. Omar drinking with his left hand. How could he possibly do that? (laughs) Oh, my God. We can't listen to this man. He wants to discredit me for, for this simple little thing. Okay, I'll tell you who the kind of people who do this. I spent 10 years amongst the top alim in Malaysia as an academic there. And I never changed my habit just to 
pretend. I realized that, you know, it was an unconscious thing and I would always, you know, so I just, I never changed, I never pretended to be like the prophet, okay? I just never pretended this. So everybody, most people took me as I, as I am. And I noticed a couple of things. I noticed two things. The most pious men that I met never mentioned this. Hmm. They never criticized me for this. The most pious, the two most pious, Professor Dr. al Muhammadi, God rest him, hmm. and uh, Professor Dr. Arafin Suhaimi. Hmm. The two most blessed men that I have met in Malaysia, they never mentioned a thing about this, and I ate and drank with my left hand all the time during many, many conversations. Okay, they never said a thing. But I'll tell you who criticized me <laughs> people who never wanted to learn. Hmm. And I, I, I'll tell you a brief story here, or just a brief anecdote to exemplify this point. I was invited to give a public talk, as I was on many occasions in Malaysia. And uh, I didn't know who these people were. I just went. I get an invitation. I go. And I began talking. And the topic um, uh, came to the point of um, uh, female circumcision. Okay. And I spoke against it. Okay. Basically, it's like cutting the head of your penis off. Okay. Mm. <laughs> That's what it is for a woman. It's the equivalent. Yeah. Anyone who, you anyone know who does this is a savage. Okay. Now, uh, it, now I, I, I was talking about this, and the moment I brought this up, and then I related it with the Muslim Brotherhood, the man who had invited me stopped me and informed everybody that I can't possibly be speaking the truth because I drank with my left hand. <laughs> mm. This was a uh. Muslim Brotherhood event, okay? And they support female circumcision. It's mm. part of the male chauvinist facade. We can talk about that on another occasion. I just want to make the point here. It is the ty tyrants who push these issues. Not the truly pious people. They never push it. There is no force in religion. Remember that. It's like what Jesus said. You let go the, I forget, you let go the camels and fight over the nants, uh, gants, yeah. like or fight over the mosquitoes. <laughs> right? Yeah. You're, and, you're, the, you're talking about these little gnats and you don't remove the log in your own eye. You see? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we'll put that. That is, a, that is a big problem because there's this concept of Islamic piety oh. that has really become that's become very perverted in a sense. Right. Yes, it, it, uh, it's a perversion. It's a perversion. And it's the same it's sort of because, you know, the prophet was a whole. Right. Yeah, and so we yeah. fragmented his whole to these externalities. Mm. And the fact that he stood up for justice, he said, don't kill the baby girl. He said, don't cheat in business, right? Yeah. He, 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 he talked about all these social issues. He, he gave women inheritance, uh, <clears throat> uh, being a wife oh. as a sacred place, gave mother yeah. a, sacred, a, a, a sacred maqam, a sacred place to a mother. He did all these things. Yes. And we're stuck on our clothing and our, our externalities, mm. yet we're eating food that is genetically modified. We're, you mm. know, we're uh, wearing clothes that's the result of child abuse with companies like Gap. Uh, mm. You know, mm. chocolate is made in these places where a lot of Muslims are abused for child labor. I mean, that mm. doesn't come to our mind. Mm. Even though those things would come into the Makki Quran, the earlier, the early prophet, meaning the, the Makki prophet, in mm. his mind, First, the the general scenario of the social justice, mm. uh, and I think that you know th this impious virtuousness mm. uh, has really permeated us. Where yes, it has. And 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 the result of that is we only talk about X number of topics throughout the year, and then repeat yes. them the next year. So like it's and Ramadan, this, and everybody's talking about Ramadan. Ignorant. This keeps people ignorant, you see. 
And uh, this is uh, this, this is why I brought and this up. I want, I want to your this question. to be clear in case anybody has any like uh, shak or shuba in their hearts. Like what is Dr. Omar talking about? He's not denying that it's a sunnah. He's saying he's lived his life as a non-Muslim for the most of his life. And and if he, he he's conscious, he, he understands it's a sunnah, but sometimes it just, you know, he misses it. Uh, not intentionally necessarily. So just keep that in mind. He's not trying to deny the Prophet any any. I don't want somebody to use these statements of you. Oh, yes. uh, have, they will, they will. But that's it's not important. I, I want to tell you now one more thing on this before we return to the answer to your question. You see, an act like this and an accusation like that, uh, I now am conscious. I'm aware of it, and I use it as a form of discernment. It tells me who the enemy of the Ummah really is. It tells me the nature of the individual whom I'm confronted with, you see. And uh, these kinds of students, I've already thrown them off my forum, you see. Mm -hmm. I have an invitation-only forum, mm -hmm. and anyone who is like that, they're just not allowed to sit at my campfire, mm -hmm. okay? That's just the way I am, okay? And I'm doing the best I can, and I'm sure the Prophet would not be unhappy with me. Inshallah. Okay? Inshallah. Now, if people want to be unhappy with them, that's fine. You can take your unhappiness and your criticism elsewhere, mm. okay, as far as I'm concerned. And we can let it rest at that. Okay. So I use it as a point of discernment, because the people who are the most pious are the people who want to learn. And they will not let a matter like this hold them back from receiving knowledge. Mm. Okay? And that's what we're here about. I know things that your listeners do not know, and I'm willing to share them with you. And you are willing to receive from me what Allah has blessed in me, mm. what Allah has placed in me. So let the games begin, <laughs> as right. they say. So uh, okay. I was asking about, and you were going to go into the fundamentals of this question, but how yes. the, the occult societies, magic, shayateen, and, yes. and, uh, and Dr. Omar, um, I want to share with you a verse of the Quran like we did, and people really appreciated it. I wanted to yes. share this verse of the Quran. Uh, I don't think I could show it here, but I'll just mention it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions shaitan in a specific context. He says uh, Hizb shaitan, the party of shaitan. Hizb is like an organized group. Yes. Hizb shaitan. And so shaitan then therefore is organized and ready for battle, so to say. Yes. Now, I'm yes. just saying this, uh, just something to keep in mind also as I ask the question of how did the occults influence modern day world? Okay. So, so when we look at the history, let's say from the uh, the Christian, uh, you know, the, the the from the Renaissance, let's say to the Enlightenment, to to where we are today. In how particular, how driven this whole s history. This was not a, a a big problem until the invention of the printing press. You see, mm -hmm. up until that time, uh, the religious leaders just worked hand in hand with the king strong man, gang leader, if you will, uh, the shaman and the chief, they would work hand in hand, okay? And they would use myths and fairy tales and gigantism uh, to control the hearts and the minds of the people. They cre would create all sorts of false heroes and all that sort of thing, and they would create a false narrative. The Trinity is one of these false narratives. It ruled Europe for the, the better part of 1,500 years. Then along came, comes this fellow named Gutenberg, and he makes a printing press, and people can start to read the actual scriptures, and they say, hey, these Catholic priests have been lying to us. Mm. <laughs> you see, they are, and they have been, and they still are. Um, and this created a problem for this uh, priest, king, shaman, chief relationship and the gigantism which they had um, 
uh, been using these gigantic idols and buildings and heroes and statues, even if it wasn't considered to be a god, it was still an idol there. You had a, a statue of so-and-so and da-da-da-da-da. And, and uh, this controls the narrative and helps control the, the hearts and minds of the people. Well, <clears throat> in Europe, this, was, this became a real problem because Europe, up until the uh, printing press, was under the control of the Catholic auspice, if you will, the Catholic mm. spiritual auspice, and this is definitely Luciferian. There's no, 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 no question about that in my mind. You know, it may be a question in the minds of other people, but anyone, I'm telling you right now, anyone who's entertaining a dialogue with uh, Catholic authorities uh, is, uh, is, 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 is mistaken mm. okay. there, at, there's at no the mistaken. upper levels. You know, right. I'm not talking about your local priest. If you you want to have a dialogue with your local priest, you go right ahead uh, and you work things out to the benefit of the community. But if you enter into a dialogue with the Jesuit or one of these uh, cardinals or bishops at the upper level, you're talking to Satan. You're talking to a represent representation, a representative, a, a dignitary, uh, an ambassador from Satan himself. Mm. Well, because these people are marked, they are branded, as I've said before in our previous conversation. Now, this was a big problem for the Catholic Church, this printing press and the dissemination of knowledge. So they had to regain control of the narrative, and uh, that was not easy. It cost millions of lives, a bloodbath in Europe uh, because of the, these things. And... Um, I'm not just talking about your normal uh, war where some warlord uh, gets greedy and he wants to take uh, the land away from another warlord. I'm talking about uh, princes and principalities uh, wanting to control the world for as far as they could see. And mm. this, is, this is Rome, the, 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 the Roman Empire even through Hitler, the Third Reich, it's called the Third Roman Reich. That's what it was. Hitler never would have risen to power without the Catholic influence, mm. without the influence and the support of the Pope, the mm. Vatican. It never would have happened. And all of this is to control the narrative. They want to control the narrative. So what have they done? Well, the Jesuit were doing their things, and we'll just go back to Napoleon now, uh, late 18th century, early uh, 19th century. Uh, and Napoleon uh, had, um, uh, had some ambition. He was the modern Alexander the Great, if you will. He even tried to visit Alexander's uh, grave, and some say that he did. And uh, he made an oath to Alexander that he was going to control the world. Then he became a Muslim, and he's, he decided he was going to Islamize the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, he had all these great ambitions, but anybody with that kind of ambition is crazy. Mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> you know, the righteous caliphs always said, oh, no, <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to be king. Anybody who wants to be king is a nutter. He's out of his mind already, mm -hmm. and that's perfect uh, for uh, Lucifer to enter in and take control. So you just bear that in mind, all these politicians running for office and your own Muslim leaders wanting to take control, they're not in the right frame of mind or heart, mm. okay, to be truly guided, okay? This mm. is a spiritual principle. So let's go back to Napoleon. Napoleon was gonna sort things out, and uh, one of the things that happened was when he, invisited, when he invaded uh, uh, Russia on his way there, he he ran into Bismarck, and Bismarck gave him a, a good battle, but the Germans lost. Mm. And one of the reasons they lost was because of the printing press. You see, his leaders, his soldiers, his officers, they all had their own opinions. Mm. <laughs> you see, And it was hard to control the army. So Bismarck uh, decided after this 
uh, humiliating loss to Napoleon that he was going to change the educational system mm. in his uh, country. And he got some uh, help uh, with all, from all sorts of people to do that. And they developed a public system of public education, which kept the people ignorant and only taught them what they wanted to know and sufficiently gave them sufficient knowledge to become good citizens. Okay. But not independent thinkers because independence is what lost the war against Napoleon. So this began an educational impetus that the Catholics said, Hey, this is a good idea. <laughs> the Jesuits say, Hey, this is a great idea. And you see, Napoleon had freed the Jesuits. They had already been thrown out of every kingdom in Europe mm. and abroad. They've been thrown out of Japan. They've been thrown out of China. Every place where they go, they get thrown out of because they're nefarious bastards is what they are. And uh, they're, they're a cult. They're a pure satanic cult. And they, can, they have their roots all the way back to uh, it, what you call this place, Isfahan, is that in Afghanistan? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And that, yes. that, route, that route goes back to Tibet, you mm. see. And uh, there are other routes there. But they, what the Jesuits want to do is after Napoleon, Napoleon became a Muslim, and then they, they brought him down. They restored the, Napoleon restored the Jesuits, put them back in power in Rome, and the Jesuits then were working already with the Illuminati, uh, the uh, Adam Weishaupt and the Jews from Frankfurt, and uh, the big financiers in uh, Holland and London and whatnot. And so they were working together and they just said, hey, we, we, we can't let Napoleon Islamize anything. He's now uh, Napoleon, you know, Abdullah somebody or something. I've forgotten what his, his name was, but he took a Muslim name. And he wanted to restore justice to everybody. OK, mm. but it's not something you can do without Allah's permission, you see. Mm. And um, you can't just say, well, I'm the, I'm the guy. No. <laughs> I'm the one, I'm the Mahdi, I'm the Messiah. How many are there <laughs> in everyone's <laughs> the religious line? How many of these uh, silly fools stand up and say, I'm the guy, I'm the guy, I'm your hero. Mm. This hero business, this is purely pagan, purely occult and purely satanic. Anyone who does that, anyone who puts himself on that podium, you see, I'm not putting myself on, on this podium. You invited me. OK, and as long as you invited me and I you I maintain this grace, I will speak. OK, mm -hmm. the moment you disinvite me, I'm gone mm -hmm. and I'm not interested. You see, this is the correct attitude. Mm -hmm. So Napoleon had this I'm the guy attitude. I'm the Messiah attitude. And he had to be put out of the way for that alone. And also because um, uh, he had become a Muslim. He was too ambitious for everyone's good, mm. you know, especially for the church. Um, so what happened was that since Bismarck initiated this educational system and the Jesuits took a good strong look at it and said, hey, you know, these Protestants, they were our enemy mm. uh, because of the Reformation and whatnot, the Germans rose up against Rome. It's an old, old uh, uh, war. I mean, it goes all the way back uh, to the beginning of the Roman Empire, this uh, animosity between Germania and Romania. Oh, okay. wow, that's interesting. Yeah, because it had, yeah, yeah that's right. It, it's an old, old war. It never ended, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, it has to do with... Uh, the what became a pagan influence, but you see the Odin, the Odin that belonged to the German heritage, he was a prophet. The first Odin was a prophet, and his teachings, his doctrines became perverted. That mm. is what always happens. It's mm. the same pattern over and over again. So by the time uh, Europe became Catholicized and Rome was Christianized, Germania was Christianized, and their 
heritage, their pagan heritage, which had elements of pure monotheism in it, mm. were all lost, you know. And uh, uh, so, but this this animosity was always there. But the Jesuits looked at Bismarck and they say, hey, this is a good thing that he's doing. Mm. Let's do it and let's systematize it because, well, that's what Ibn Maimun did. Abdullah Ibn Maimun did when he established the Pataniya. Okay, mm. it's exactly what he did. He systematized their education, taught them what he wanted to know. He wanted them to know so that they became good slaves, not to Allah, to him. Mm. You see, and uh, this then gave birth to the, you know, to the Fatimids, to the Ishmaelis, to the uh, uh, assassins, all of those cults, and mm. they've come down even now today as the Aga, cult, Aga Khan cult. Okay, yeah. this is a satanic organization. Okay, mm. is that painting another target on me? Of course it is. Okay, so that's what happens. Now, so the educational system then became public. Up until that point, there were no public schools. Mm. Up until Napoleon, there was no public school. You, you, everyone was educated privately or in the or within the church system. Those who were educated, mm. or they they had tutors. It was like the king would hire a tutor, you know, to to teach his son, teach his children. That's how it was done. There were no public schools except for what was taking place in Islam. Mm. See. Islam had a sort of public education system through their religious schools. And uh, I'm not completely qualified to speak about Islamic history, so I just leave it at that. But in Europe, there was no public education. So Bismarck started the public education system. It was then institutionalized. Uh, some fellow then from the Alsace-Lorraine region uh, began to establish the kindergarten. You know what I'm so now we have kindergartens all over the world and we have daycare centers all over the world and the children are being indoctrinated from those early ages by a universal curriculum. Okay, mm. And this is teaching the children to be good servants to the states. Mm. So in answer to your question, they keep children, they keep their citizens ignorant. Okay through the public education system. This is one of the occult approaches, okay? okay. Now, it's, it's born, everything that is occult, everything that is, in, that is satanic, also begins as a righteous impulse. That's interesting. So does this have to do with what they were doing internally? Like, you know how, you, how like Freemasons would have different degrees? So yes. it's like you learn at one degree and then you go to the next degree and you learn a little yes. bit more and the next degree. And so what they were doing internally uh, across many of these occults, they said, well, yes. we should do the same thing with the whole society. So create yes. first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, you know, make them lit <laughs> uh, literally functional yes. and so that they can function as good citizens and, you know, become good uh, yes. readers of instruction uh, or yes. just good workers. Yeah, this institutionalizes habit, okay? Yeah. So people become habitualized to a particular way of thinking. They become habitualized to what they are presented as their history, as their form of patriotism. So their loyalties are removed from serving Allah they're, because they're, they're compartmentalized, you see. So rather than becoming a, serv becoming a servant of God first, they become a servant of the state and God. So then they have to make constantly make choices. This is so what happened here with this institu institutionalization of uh, education and the dissemination of knowledge uh, was twisted in such a way so that the old order, the old order of God and then the ruler, the caliph, and then those under, under the caliph who supported the caliph and defended the caliph going all the way down the pyramid to the uh, common farmer or whoever swept the street, this was destroyed. Mm. You see? Now, what we're talking about is the destruction of relationship. Mm. They began to destroy the relationship. 
in Europe, and then they exported the system globally through the Freemasonic system, through colonialism, okay? Uh, the first British who went to uh, India, for example, uh, they noted that the Indian system of uh, education and uh, the society norms were wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that it was a very pleasant society. Everything was flowing uh, a, 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 in a beneficial way for everybody, except for a few groups like the thugs, you know. Um, and the British said, well, we, we can't have this. We'll never be able to control them. We have to destroy their educational system and establish our own. Hmm. This, was, this was even said in Parliament in the early 18th century. This hmm. was a declaration made in, in Parliament, I think, by uh, Palmerston or somebody of that nature. I forgot. I, I can't keep track of all their names. But the principle is the same. You see, so they spread this system globally. Now, what is this system? This system is not the old divine order. It's a new order. And that's mm. why they call it the new world order. So they infiltrated all of these Masonic lodges. And then they used these people to influence the educational systems, the regimentation of the armed forces, the regimentation of the police. And all of the administrative services came under Freemasonic auspices. And these Freemasons, as you said, they were taught grade by grade by grade by grade. Well, mm -hmm. only the people at the very top, above the 33rd, know, know what's going on. From the 28th degree above, and there are, are degrees above the 33rd, um, they are the ones who really know what's going on. At the 28th degree, they actually take an oath to serve Lucifer. Hmm. Okay. By then, they are taught to believe that Lucifer is the real God. And this is a Kabbalic doctrine. Hmm. This is a doctrine that comes from the Kabbalah. The whole system is, Juda is Judaified. Okay. Uh, so this Judification of the ancient operative Freemason, Freemasons into speculative Freemasons affected the whole world because these people went out as the middle management, if you will, and upper management at certain levels of the colonial enterprise. Mm. And these colonial colonists, these colonialists, they affected and transformed every society that they controlled. Mm. Okay, and this all began after the printing press and after the European wars that between the Catholic Church and the Germans and the, you know, the 100 years war, the 30 years war, the problem they had with Henry VIII and all of this sort of thing. So they used the Freemasons to spread the system. Well, what is the system? The system is, a, as I said, a destruction of the natural system of order, okay? The system that gives you relationship, the system that is based on the family, on the tribe, on the regional clan, and mm. on a group of clans where the leaders have formed a federation. Mm. And all of those federations, this is, this is the Khalifa, this is the Hanbal Khalifa, okay? Mm. Where, you know, the leaders of the tribes, the leaders, the fathers, the grandfathers, the tribal chiefs, the clan chiefs, they all work together in loyalty with the caliph. The mm -hmm. caliph leaves them alone and only calls on them if there's a war, mm -hmm. okay? Otherwise, he leaves them alone. And they leave the caliph alone if only if they have a problem they cannot solve. And mm -hmm. though if their local judges cannot solve a problem, they send it to the caliph's court, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is the way all of the traditional societies in the world worked to mm -hmm. a greater or lesser degree. It was all based on relationship. It was all paternalistic with a matriarchal balance in most cultures. Okay, not all. If you look at the Native Maybe American... That's why we vote for the elder in our county. You know, the elder. It's called the elder. The, the, you yes. know, they act as the elder, but they're, they're not, you know... Yes. 
So now you have these bureaucrats coming in who've been infected by the secret doctrines of the Kabbalah, uh, who've been taught according to a certain system to obey a hidden leader. Uh, this is like obeying the hidden um, uh, uh, caliph, you know, of uh, the Shia. <laughs> so uh, uh, it, 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 the, it, the system is all the same. They never get to see the leader, the, the ultimate leader, okay? Mm. But they obey, they obey. This is, a, uh, this is a Jesuit system, and that's Jewish, okay? So this system went out. It infiltrated all levels. It changed the educational system of all the cultures, and it destroyed relationship. Because now you have state entities, never had state entities before, until the 18th, 19th century, the mm -hmm. state entities did not exist. You had relationship, you had a monarch, you had a leader, and you had clan leaders under him. Mm -hmm. And each of them had their own domain, okay? Now you have relationship with, you don't have no relationship with your leaders. You have, yeah. have strangers ruling you. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and the and families are broken. You know, the brother is here, place. and the other brothers in the other city, and the other brothers in the other city, and we've totally yes. broken the natural order of things in a sense. Yes, the everyone moves to wherever off. they got their jobs, basically. <laughs> so, so now you have an abstract system that allows Satan to have complete free reign mm. to do whatever he wants. Okay. Mm. And that's what's happening now with this COVID thing. Look at how everybody's obeying, and these people don't have any relationship with anybody that they're obeying. Mm -hmm. You see? Excuse me, just a minute. <clears throat> so I hope that... Uh, makes the principle clear uh, to our, our listeners and to you. Do you, do you have any uh, question now that I yeah. uh, got this far? Right. So, uh, so we have these occults. They've affected society this way. They've especially affected the educational system, uh, put everyone towards compliance. Um, so mm. uh, my, my other question now has to do with... Um, where we are today, what are the mm. changes we can expect? What are the concrete changes that we can expect? Now, I know surveillance would be a big change, mm. probably, and, and, and I guess different types of technologies. Would you like to comment on uh, a little bit more about how we got where we are and where we're going? So, Oh, dear. I, I'm not sure that I'm qualified to do that. Uh, I understand the metaphysics of what's going on, but the actual political science is a different matter. Mm. Uh, the actual political science is something that uh, you have to uh, discuss with, with, with an expert, someone who knows the names, the dates, um, uh, you know, someone like, uh, for example, Pablo Escobar. Mm. Uh, not Escobar, uh, which is, is not Pablo there's a fellow, there's a correspondent named, uh, I think his name is Escobar. Um, but he always is on the mark. Uh, mm. This fellow, it, 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 maybe, his, maybe his name will come back. Some of your leaders, some of your listeners will know who I'm referring to. Now, Pablo, Pablo was the drug dealer. His, his first name is different. Uh, uh, this fellow knows exactly what happened, who happened, who did it and why they did it, what their immediate motivations were. Uh, this falls under the principles that I'm discussing, okay? Mm. I'm discussing gen generic principles which are at the upper level that guide these people who make the decisions. Gu it guides them spiritually and philosophically, okay? So, I'm actually, I do guys. have one interesting question, if you don't mind. Uh, yes. That is that... What do you, you know, a lot of Muslims are getting their information from different sources like David Icke, Noam Chomsky, George mm. Galloway, different mm. people. Um, is there any rules you think, like as we listen to other people, is there, you know, as Muslims, is there any rules we need to keep in mind? 
or or could you give a breakdown of okay this is one of the people that's kind of figured it out but this is his positive aspect this is his negative aspect i think a lot of muslims would benefit with a type of guidance where because they are listening to david ike they are listening to you know noam chomsky they are listening to mm -hmm. george galloway and the others um some sort of like breakdown of what did you see positive or negative in each um okay um, that might be I, a whole different I, I listen to I listen to uh, as many different sources as I, as I possibly can, mm. because you can learn from everybody. Mm. You can learn from everybody except from the ignorant. But even the ignorant people can, you know, you can learn from a child, and they're pretty ignorant. <laughs> but um, uh, you can you can learn from everybody. For example, David Icke. Uh, let you take him as an example. Da David Icke is um, is pretty well informed, and he's been doing what he's been doing for a long time. I don't necessarily follow him. I, I listen to him from time to time just to keep in touch with what he's doing, because and the reason I kept in touch with what he's doing is because he's he's got this um, he, he's got a fetish with the lizard people, you know, and. Um, so uh, this whole amphibian thing that, uh, you know, the queen is a uh, reptile, uh, 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 this sort of thing is not on the mark. It's off the mark uh, of the reality, because uh, what, what's happened is that the, these people are possessed. They're demonically possessed, but they are not demons incarnate. Now, mm -hmm. there may be some somewhere that are incarnate. I don't know. OK. I've met witches. I've met warlocks. Uh, I've, I've I've met. I've had encounters with uh, uh, disembodied entities, if you will. Um, so I know some things about these. But the queen is not a lizard. <laughs> okay, she she's probably uh, well uh, and uh, successfully uh, inhabited by a group of demons. Uh, and uh, Jesus talked about this during his lifetime. He said he met a few people and uh, he identified one demon that said, uh, my name is Legion because we are many. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And this was all in one person. Okay. So you have people like this. And why is the lizard uh, uh, imagination used? It's used because uh, these uh, entities that you're dealing with, they have the cold heart of a lizard. They're cold-blooded, mm. okay? So their decisions are particular, and what they want is particularly id-centered, okay? Mm. Uh, so they're egocentric. They, you know, they're just like the, 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 the frog on the branch. He eats whatever is within his reach, mm. and he does it dispassionately. Mm. It's because this is who he is. So... This uh, lizard mentality, this cold-hearted, brutish mentality, is not human. Mm. Okay, so Ike is correct about that, but they're they're not lizards. Okay, <laughs> so uh, you know, I I I I do a, a certain cutoff point with with people who who, who talk, discuss these things. Um, you you take a, a few other people. Uh, I, I'm not good with names. I, I forget their name, but there's another fellow who is very good with philosophy and uh, uh, history, and especially history of the, the the church and the church's enemies. And um, I listen to him because I can learn from him, and uh, I can learn many things from him. But when he starts to talk about the Trinity, <laughs> I turn him off. You see, that that that's where so. You use the revelation uh, from the Quran and the knowledge of the Quran to 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 cut these people off because they don't have that insight. They don't share that basis. But the rest of their knowledge is sound. Mm. You see, the rest of their knowledge is sound. I I, I wouldn't you know I'm not going to ask the uh, the surgeon uh, you know if he's a Buddhist or uh, uh, you know whatever his religion is if my life depends on his skill okay if right. my life depends on his skill have at it because i'm under your knife at the by the will of allah you see so 
uh, you know, let, let's just go along with the flow. So I always go with the flow. And then when I come to a certain point, my angel kind of steps in and says, oh, don't go any further with mm -hmm. this individual. So I'm kind of, uh, how shall we say, uh, I, I'm in tune with the spirit of Allah by means of whatever it is that he, um, how, however it is that he communicates with us. Okay, I don't know how to put that Islamically, but let me put it, let me give you a picture. Before I became a Muslim, uh, I was often, you know, in the house, I'd be seen talking to myself. My, my wife would say, who are you talking to? I said, I'm talking to my angel, you see. I, I'm having a conversation with my angel. And I would uh, sometimes say, I'm talking to God. You know, oh, well, that makes me a crazy man, you see. But I used to think of my relationship with God as if he were sitting on my shoulder, mm. you see. And then I read in the Quran that he's closer to me than my jugular vein. And I said, hey, I was pretty close to the truth here, <laughs> you see. So if he's closer to me than my jugular vein, then I can certainly have a conversation with him. Sure, absolutely. And I, and I don't have to pray just to have this conversation. Now, I may need to pray just to keep the portals open and clean. But if I'm at my desk and I want to ask him something or ask my angel something, I just ask. Mm. Now, if you were to live with me and you were in the next room, you'd often hear me sitting at my desk talking to myself. Mm. You see? But I'm not. I'm conversing with the spiritual realm that I believe with all my heart, Allah has given me as a sort of bubble of protection by mm. his will. Okay. Not because I deserve it, but because well, of his Quran will. I mentioned this, especially the protection part. The uh, angels are there protecting you and, you know, they're observing you, protecting you and guiding you. All of this is there in the traditions of the Prophet. Yeah, they go before and behind. If Satan gives you a, a bad inspiration, the angels give you a positive inspiration. Yes. I mean, this is there in the traditions of the Prophet. Yes. So I, I think maybe we've taken this as far as we can should go today. Okay. Um, unless you have another specific question. Uh, no, I feel I feel we've come to an end uh, and we can take it up from here. Yes. But uh, I, I believe this is somewhat fruitful okay, okay. and uh, let's try again in another two or three days okay okay inshallah so inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum. Inshallah. 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 yes